Hello. Now, as we look after our Microsoft 365 tenants, sometimes we would like to do a full report. We want to know all the mailboxes that are there, what the usage is, what the OneDrive usage is, uh, what we have in SharePoint, what uh, sites we have, what the teams look like, who's a member of teams, who's the owner of teams, distribution lists, contacts, guests, the lot. We want to know everything. So what I've got for you today is a script that you can put everything, uh, capture everything through one script and put it into a nice Excel sheet that you can then use and you can filter and import and, and basically play with it to your heart's content afterwards. So that's um, rather good to have. So jump in here, follow this, I'll show you exactly what to do. Once you've downloaded the script, I'd suggest putting it into a C Drive scripts folder, you can see here, then run it with administrative privileges on PowerShell, you'll get a screen like this. Now, you can see here, I've got the C Drive scripts hard coded in here. That's where everything goes for the logs and the reports and the like. So change that accordingly. What you can do is you can hard code the credentials if you wish. If you're just using uh, standard non MFA type credentials to get it, you can do this handy if you're going to be running it lots and lots of times because you don't have to keep putting in credentials, obviously, when you run the script, but not essential, obviously. Now, I would also suggest make this a bit bigger so we can see what's going on when we run it. And we just hit the play to start that off. As you can see, you've got the, the menu to start. On the menu, you can see that it's has purple here for the no runtime admin and tenant name stored. If you did hard code that information, it would show you what they were in terms of the name of the credential and the tenant name. But here, we're just going to go in and put option one and give it some credentials. So we just put in my tenant details here, my test one. So, and you can see now it knows that the credential is stored. Number two, it wants the tenant name, which is just the prefix, not the rest of it, as you can see here. So, mark test 77. Seven. And now it's just gone green. You can see it's quite happy to start things off. Now, also, obviously, to run these reports, it needs a whole load of different PowerShell modules to be installed. You may have them installed already on your machine, may not, but option three here. We actually go through and check that you have them all for the ones that it needs. If it doesn't have them, it will go and install them for you what it needs. But you can see obviously on this machine, they're all green. It does have exactly what it is after. Off the menu here, you can see that number four, Exchange Online Report, you can run them all separately or you can run them all together. The one that runs together will give you the spreadsheet at the end because it'll compile all those CSV files for you. But if you want the CSV files separately, run any of these. You can see that number eight here is really just four and five together. This is probably the one I use the most when I'm doing reports on certain things. But I'm going to do the, this option here and let them all run at the same time. Just a quick note, number 10 is the on-prem report. If you're running this on an Exchange server locally, you don't obviously need all these, these login credentials. Just do number 10, it will give you a decent on-prem mailbox report. But we'll run this one. Can take a bit of a while depending on the size of your tenant, so I'm just gonna kick it off and let it obviously connect and do its thing and uh, carry on. I should mention as that's starting as it goes through is that if you don't put in the credentials that's where it will then prompt you to put them in if you are running mfa on your tenant that's the option you want to use don't put those credentials in it'll give you a prompt for them you go through the mfa process and then it will run successfully after that so so that's how to do the mfa side for this uh, particular script just as the script runs it'll give you all the details about what it's doing you can see if i just shift that over a little bit you can see what it started to do is firstly it creates a decent log file of everything and these are all the reports that are starting to get generated uh, you can have a look at those anytime but the best way to the end have a look at that spreadsheet that comes out but just a, an update as it runs through that mfa report does take a little bit of a while to run um, it's you'll see what it's reporting at the end and you'll see why it takes a while but it's uh, certainly an interesting one to look at so you can see this is pretty close to the end now just want to show you what it does at the end. You can see CSV output finished. You can see there it's grabbing the data. It's created this little spreadsheet for us, which is all good. And now we're back to here. We can run any of those again, but we just press zero to come out. Okay, let's have a look at here. And you can see there's the Excel sheet that it's created. The rest of it is all the CSV imports that it would, uh, that it would need. But let's just open that up and check it out. 
So the spreadsheet has formatted quite nicely as well, as you can see, you've got all the, the main details here. Uh, also the item size, which converts to straight megabytes. The column here for batch name I put in, if I'm doing migrations, it's a handy column to have automatically in the sheet. If you're doing any sort of batch creation work, it's good to have a column ready for you. But as we go across, you'll see that it also talks about the, the last login time, but also the last action time, if anything was on there. It's a test tenant, so people don't really go in and do anything, but it will show you the time that they actually did something on their mailbox. Um, I also pull out what the inbox sizes are and counts. Contacts, calendars, and tasks count. Also quite handy if you have a migration going on. Now you can see here, this is where the OneDrive data comes in. And you can see if their OneDrive is active or not, how much data they've got, what their quota is, and obviously what their link is as well. Uh, and also the date they did anything, any delegates full access, any shared as, send on behalf of, grabs all the email addresses, talks about their licenses and roles. That, that's the main mailbox report. But let me just show you what these other ones look like. You've got the Teams. If we go to Teams first, you'll see these are our Microsoft Teams. You can see member counts and storage used, that type of thing, which is handy. And if we scroll right across, you can see you've got all the members. Now, this is handy for looking at what the Teams look like. But if we look at Teams members, you can see it's a bit of a, a larger list. So you've just got what appears to be duplicates, but that's because it's looking at the names and, of course, the different roles. This is handy if you want to find out who uh, what teams somebody is actually a member of. So if we do a filter on that and we want to say, okay, I want to have a look at this guy, Adam Foster, and see what he's about, we can just do a, a list here, just grab him. Oh, excuse me, there we go. And you can see he is just a member of the sales team. And likewise, I'll just clear that out. But you can see that now we've got other items you can see, like Evelyn is just is the owner of the sales. So you can look at who's the owner and uh, who's the members quite easily just to have a look around what the, the team's membership looks like. The SharePoint tab will give you all of that data about SharePoint. Now remember that SharePoint is the back end for Teams and OneDrive. So when you look at the SharePoint details here, this information would also be what's in Teams. Now, if we go across to the right here, you can see Teams Connected and Teams Channel Connected. Any of these that have a true on them means they're going to be in the Teams report. So to get a truer view of what is in the SharePoint as such, you need to just be Teams Connected, only show what's false here. And this will show you just what your SharePoint landscape looks like for your tenant. So that's obviously important. Now if we look at the OneDrive as well, this really is just the OneDrive report, which is broken out from the mailbox report, but it gives you an idea of who's using OneDrive and the data that they have in OneDrive and when they last touched it, when did they last modify it, when something done in there, so that's quite handy. Now the MFA report is an interesting one because it will show you everybody on the tenant, whether they obviously whether they have a mailbox or not. You can see there was only 24 people before, but there's 39 in here because we do have other other accounts. You can see some of them are shared mailbox accounts and some of them are just Azure identities. But what it's showing here is things like, is their credential blocked? Do they have MFA set up? Is that MFA enforced? And even the MFA method they chose, are they an admin? And what their admin role is? Are they even licensed? This really gives us the opportunity, if we put a filter on there, to say, okay, who has not got their MFA set up? You can see all of these people and anybody that has it in force, obviously we've got no one here, is going to have a problem logging in. So if we look at here, put that back to a yes. Uh, you can also see who has got it set up for phone app, if they've got uh, callback or, or whatever they've got there. Phone app notification is obviously Authenticator. But you can have a look here of the admin accounts and say of the admin accounts, these are what they are. And yes, I'm displaying all my data here, but it's a test tenant, so I really don't care. And uh, you can see who has got MFA set up and who hasn't, and, um, and really just have a good report on the tenant from there. Now, this tenant doesn't have any guest accounts they would show here if they did, but um, contacts, a bit limited on there. There's just one person there, but it's handy to see all the contact details. And distribution lists. Now, if we look at distribution lists here, you can see here there is a distribution list set up, and here DL members, I can see the distribution list itself and who is a member of that. Very light being a test tenant, but you can see how this would grow into a much bigger report once you have some, some real good data in there. 
And the opportunity after that is really to take everything you have here, mailbox reports, and you can make some good solid pivot tables and really some good summary information about your tenant, about their usage, especially good if you're setting up for a migration. You've got a lot of data here you can you can certainly use for that. So really to download the script, uh, jump onto the website, thecloudgeezer.com. You can see at the moment it's on the front page, but if it's not for any time, just go to the script section here. You can see discovery report, jump into that, and really it talks about really what we've just discussed. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, The Cloud Geezer, and I will talk to you next time. Thank you very much.